This is Pace the Nation. What's up, everybody? Welcome into Pace the Nation, broadcasting back here at Studio 1A in downtown Arlington, Virginia. We are back. We are back. I am back at the studio from uh, when I was last broadcasting in L.A. I'm your host, Chris Farley. Alongside me, across the country, literally across the country in Seattle, it's my co-host wife, Julie Cully. Julie, what's up? It's not usually that dark in the uh, in the studio. We're so broadcasting. We're broadcasting. It's still light here. I know. Towards the a little darker uh, there. Evening here, uh, and and it's it's uh, for for folks um, you know who like to follow along at home. Uh, it's yeah, it's about seven something here in in Arlington. So it's about three something there out your way. And you're, you're mm, yawning already. Four, yeah, <laughs> mm, you got it. Uh, so you're out there with, with Brooks. Uh, great week. Uh, there's so much to talk about here, Julie. We've got amazing guests who are going to be joining us. I, you know what? I'm going to let you kind of choose your own adventure on what you want to talk about. Um, and we'll, 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 we'll get into our guests in a minute. But before we do that, um, I want you to tell me what you want to talk about. So... We got a lot going on. And, and, you know, I like to give the personal Do I have options. Do I have options? <laughs> yeah, Are options. you going to name some Two options. options for me? Two okay. options. And, okay. and, and really, so this I don't is know really what you want to talk about, but you're going to give me the floor to decide yeah, which one decide. of the topics yeah, that you want to talk about. Okay. We got our Instagram about. handle back. That was big news in the Pace big Nation news. world. Big uh, we news. can talk about that. You and I are moving this week, even though you're in Seattle. That is huge news for us. I like the mm -hmm. personal stuff. Okay. Uh, and our trip to the world championships. We're going to talk a lot about uh, the world uh, championships that we were just at. You and I were just at, but I want to maybe bring up the angle of you and I being there and how it impacted our young family. So those are your options. We could talk about us moving this week, our trip to uh, the world's uh, championship track meet, the circus that it was, or our Instagram handle. Well, I'd like to talk about worlds, but it, it's easy. The audience just needs to go to your LinkedIn profile and they can find <laughs> out the play-by-play, -play, all the details, how it took yeah. a village, all the people that stepped up in order for us to make it happen. Follow me on LinkedIn. Yeah, Chris Farley. Yeah, I, please. I am please. a LinkedIn He's influencer. influencer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> correct. Um, all right, so let's go there. Um, and Well, you know what? Let's, let's do that because that's appropriate. Our guest today, really excited about having both John and Johnny Gregorak, the fastest father-son duo in the mile to ever do it. Uh, PRs of 351 for John and 349 for Johnny. Uh, and John works for ASICS in the sports marketing uh, department at ASICS. And Johnny is an athlete for ASICS. So we're looking forward to having them on the program today. I went out there with ASICS. You went out to Worlds uh, with Brooks. You had work to do. I kind of sprung this on you kind of late in the game. Um, ASICs probably asked me in a very appropriate amount of time, but I probably didn't mention it to you. you I'm know, sure our later. audience is shocked. <laughs> yes. But shocked you had to go that. out there for work. You had athletes mm -hmm. competing in the world uh, championships, which were in Eugene. Uh, and then I went out there to do some work, to have some fun, and to watch some uh, awesome track and field. So that left the kids kind of in the balance, hanging in the balance. What do we do with the kids? Oh, that's not like a, what do we do with the kids? That's like a, what is Julie going to plan here in yeah. order for this to happen? So real quick, we were going to make a family vacation out of this. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when we first talked about worlds, it's always been on the calendar for me as a sports marketing person, just like with John Gregoric, he's going to be at world championships for his yep. brand. Yep. And in particular this time around, because they were hosting. But this was always on the calendar. And last mm -hmm. year, we were both at the Olympic trials together with our kids. And it was pretty stressful. Like, you were you were doing things. I was doing things. And so balancing the kids was really hard. So this year, you were like, listen, I'm not going to be working. 
I'll I'll tag team with the au pair with Andrea yep. and we'll bring the kids out. You're all working, three boys. All three boys. You're working, you know, we'll prioritize your job and, and what's going on there and, and we'll all come out and it'll be great. The kids will get to go to the track meet, well, we'll have I, new experiences, build memories. But then I was invited to the world championships. Yeah. In Oregon so then, so then so as, we had things, as things happen in our household, um, <laughs> Chris Farley calls me one day and was like, guess what? I'm like, what? I got invited to the world championships. And I was like, so? <laughs> <laughs> what you're, do you you're, mean? You're, I was like, okay, you're great. You, you, told can't them, go. you told them no, right? Like, we have a whole plan. You're like, why aren't you happy for me? I'm like, because we have a plan. And you're like, look, I need to do this. ASICs invited me. It's going to be incredible. They're the host. They're like bringing in this super high level experience. Yep. You know, I, I want to be a part of it. And I'm like, okay, well then what happens to the kids? And you're like, well, we'll just bring them. I'm like, no, 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 no. Cause I know what's going to happen here. Yep. You're going to be off with ASICs, having a grand old time, enjoying yourself, having yep. drinks, having great meetings. Yep. And I'm going to be quote unquote working and also balancing the three kids. So, right. so we'll anyway, fast forward. What we ended up doing. What we ended up doing was yeah. Julian came out with us because he's never old. been to the new stadium. So he came out with us. The big boys we got to see it last year. And my mom came down from New Jersey and helped Andre with the two big boys. Yes. And you Brooklyn. and I were in separate quarters. I've been Brooklyn. here with Brooks the last couple of days. They're like, oh, man. And it sounds like you and Chris had such an amazing time. And I was like, I didn't even <laughs> see Chris. I was in a hotel with ASICs. You had our one-year-old in a pack and play in your Airbnb with Brooks. And yeah. my sister did come. I got to give props to my sister, yes, she Denise. Did. Yeah, she was She awesome. was amazing. But all the, the plan was perfect. What was the issue? The issue was everybody got sick. Everybody Three days sick. into the event. My sister, who is basically your uh, lifeline, helping yeah. with with Julian while yeah, you she, actually she do starts, your job. She starts vomiting. She starts vomiting. I'm like, well, I got to work, so put a mask on around the kid. <laughs> and so I don't know whether Julian gave her something or she got something, whatever it was, uh, she was sick. Then we get uh, a call from your mom. Um, Everybody's sick at Paul home. Paul was sick. Then Paul James was sick. was sick. Then my mom got sick. And then when we finally got back to DC with Julian, he got sick. Yes. So we just, it was, it was awesome. So it was really, everybody got sick. It was an amazing time. And for 90% of it, I was in the hotel with ASICs hanging out, having a good time while you dealt with. Uh, Until the last night when I barked at you and I was like, we're done. You got to come back here and help me with the kid. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I just wanted to give that context. I was hoping you when you choose your own adventure. It's a you, typical uh, Chris Farley crowbar moment. Like, yeah. you're going to get yours. You yeah. know, well, and I'm going to have know. to, I'm going to have to figure it out. I'm going to have to pick up the pieces. I'm going to have to make some arrangements. Well, it all worked out. Uh, your it mom. Did. Uh, my mother-in-law, uh, our, our au pair, uh, my sister, it took, it took a, took a village and it was a bit of a circus, but we got there. I had an amazing time. You had an amazing time. Your athletes did an incredible, I had an amazing time. I was there with ASICs. Um, we were thrilled to, uh, watch, uh, an amazing five days of track and field. Um, you were with Brooks. I was with ASICs and I got to connect, uh, with, uh, one of your old friends in this business who works in sports marketing, John Gregorak. So um, we talked to him and his wife, Chris, uh, together. His son, Johnny, was running and, um, you know, he, he did amazing, too. And so uh, it, it was a great week. Great to connect with the Gorak. So we, con we we said, why don't we get them on the podcast? So we put it all together and we are a week off. But now we're really excited to have. Our, our next guest, we got multiple guests, really excited about having the best ever father-son duo in the mile, John Gregorak, who works for ASICS, Johnny Gregorak, who runs for ASICS. They are going to join us next here on Pace the Nation. Pace the Nation is brought to you by Pacers Running Stores. Pacers has six stores in Northern Virginia and D.C., for the best running footwear, apparel, and gear, just stop by or schedule a virtual fitting with the best running experts in the business. Pacers Running exists to help as many people as possible through running. For every run, it's Pacers Running. 
All right, welcome back to the program. And now, Julie, we are excited to be joined by the fastest, the very fastest in the world, <laughs> father-son, Mayo, Mayo duo ever to do it. John Gregorak, Johnny Gregorak, John's in somewhere in Massachusetts, Johnny's in Memphis, you're in Seattle. This is a crazy pace of nation. Gregorax, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, man. I can't believe you knew that fact about us being the fastest <laughs> father. So. That's amazing. Did a great, <laughs> great Google search. Really yes, good I, on Google. I did. Well, you know what? I did Google it, guys. And I saw that when it actually, when the record happened, Johnny ran maybe 353, 354 or something. And that was enough because John um was a 351 miler back in his day and johnny when you hit that 355 mark um you guys took the title and then you even distance yourself from the pack with johnny running 349 um so you guys got an average of 350.5 i mean it's incredible how actually let me let's start there how cool is it and i'll start with you johnny how cool is it that you can say you and your dad are the best to ever do something it's it's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> I uh, wait, wait, you know, wait, breaking news here. I guess I never really thought about it like that. I, I mean, I, I've I, we've uh, got I've got a son, and I'm like, if he thought I was cool with anything, I'd be so psyched. I mean, oh yeah, sons. no, I think. Let me it's, remind yeah. you, three sons, three, three of sons. Them. That's right. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely, I, I it's it's a lot of fun. Absolutely, it's it's a very cool thing to share with yeah. uh, with my dad and. Uh, it's fun. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, my dad didn't really even focus on the mile that much, which is yeah. pretty wild. I think it's just a handful of times run it. So it's a good thing he really knocked that one out of the park. And we both ran our fastest times on infamously fast tracks, too. So it's fun to both have the, we have the fastest father son duo, and he did it on the Oslo outdoor track, and I awesome. did it on the Boston University. So those might be the, that might be the fastest outdoor and fastest indoor track in the uh, world. Uh, so. Another, another, another uh, neat thing about the record. So John, same to you, same question to you. How cool is it? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I think it's totally. That's one of those dad things for sure, like a, a parent <laughs> thing. Like when you know, the older you get, the better you were. I think you know when you're younger, you're like, oh yeah, great. I got, I have to tie something in with my dad, but, uh, but you know, it, no, it's, it's fun. It, it's, uh, you know, when people, when, I don't know, when, when it first came up, I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know that was even a thing, but anyway, <laughs> now, cause, That's it, a good way to put it. cause it, when you think about it, we could, we could actually be the steeple. We have to, we probably have the steeplechase record too. And, uh, but you know, the other thing is we have to bring up that Johnny's mom is a two, two minute, Absolutely. 800 meter runner and a 407, 1500 meter runner. So we, yeah, anyway, it was, it's, it, it's fun. It, it's a fun, fun thing to, uh, who knows, maybe, maybe someday we'll, you know, we'll be on Jeopardy or something. <laughs> well, you know what? Th that's a great call, John. Like what's Chris is times are like the month. There's gotta be a mother son record. Um, Julie would like to have that one, you know, be be out there on the internet there's got to be a show or if there isn't there should be because you probably top that list too yeah I don't, nothing's nothing's i don't think there's a mother son thing i don't think anyone no. cares about that all right but maybe well, maybe chris this will inspire us yeah, to start talking to it about there. it all but right one well, day well, we can force <laughs> our children to be fast runners right right well but what people do care about was the world championships let's talk about it uh I was out there with ASICs. Julie was out there as well. What an amazing week. John, you were out there for all 10 days. Johnny, you were out there maybe all 10 days. Well, actually, you probably because you've raced since. Mm -hmm. um, John, I'll start with you. You are um, you work for in sports marketing at ASICs. Um, amazing job. You guys are the World Athletics Championships partner at ASICs. Amazing job. What was your role? How great was it to be a, a part of the World Champs in Eugene? First time ever it's been in the, the U.S. Yeah, it was, um, I mean, just, it was such a great experience. And, you know, so many people uh, at ASICS, I mean, it, there was nobody that didn't touch the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking, you know, customer service, marketing, merchandising, our product people. Uh, I mean, it was, it just went down the line and it's, you know, Oh, probably you know a couple of years in planning and and uh, just incredible amount of hard work. I mean, I was you know fraction fraction of 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 the the team that went into this and 
I mean, as you know, it, I mean, it's, it kicked off, you know, once the planning was over, it kicked off in June with a, with a van that was, mm -hmm. we had an uplift tour that, um, traveled the country, stopped at different stops. Stopped at our, at, at Pacers here in DC, had 160 huge, people with Believe in the Run there. It was amazing. Huge crowd there, huge crowd wherever it went. Um, people, again, people talk about sacrificing some time in your life to, for our, uh, part of our family to be, you know, for ASIC's family to be doing that. And then, um, you know, we had a, a five, an uplift 5k during the, during the meet, during the first time ever during the marathon, the men's marathon takes off. And then we have a thousand runners following right, right behind them. Um, and then doing a, a, a 5k loop there. And people were really excited about that. We had thousands of people watching the race. It was, the race it was incredible. That. And I ran that John, you guys executed, uh, it was, it was amazing. It was a really cool concept. Yeah. It was just one thing after the next. Then you guys experienced our, the ASICS hall where people could come, athletes could come and relax, have some lunch, get, get therapy, family and friends came, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it was really a great experience. We had many of our uh, run specialty people there, such as you guys. Um, we had our ambassadors there. Uh, it was just one thing after the next. And we, we really wanted, you know, we wanted to humbly just show the world what what ASICS is all about and what we represent uh, as as a as a group. Um, not we didn't we were not concerned about any other brands and what might happen out there with any other brands. We just wanted to show people what we stood for and and uh, you know our you know li living you know especially in these times you know times are tough and just to try to lift people up a little bit. Um, in our, you know, um, philosophy, sound mind, sound body, you know, we really put that out there and, and wanted people to experience it. And we, we did it. And it, it was just such a good feeling to have all that planning to come to fruition and, and to actually have it come off the way it did was awesome. Johnny, you talked about the experience of, you know, wearing USA across your chest and having home, hometown, home country advantage. What were the actual races like for you? How did the rounds go? Well, they were, yeah, they, I mean, they were intense. Uh, and the international racing is a totally different ball game. It's just very physical and very, uh, it's, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to uh, compete, you know, as you're racing against the best guys in the world. But it's also a lot of fun because you get to, like, stand on the starting line with the best guys in the world. So, um, you know, I advanced through the, uh, yeah, the first round and then didn't, didn't make the final kind of a crazy, yeah, close race. I'm sure you, you saw it. Or you might oh, it was just heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. <laughs> I want to ask your dad about it because you were, you were so that. fit. And, and we're going to talk about your race and your racing in Memphis. I mean, your, your race afterwards where you've obviously got fitness. So take us through that second second round where, you know, for our audience, you know, if you're top, I, I think the top four maybe places got through or something like top that. Maybe five, top, yeah. top five, five. Top yeah. five. Yep. And you were coming in so hot that last 200 trying to sneak in on the inside. And I just feel like your momentum was, was way faster than anybody's there, but you just didn't get there. Tactical error. Like tell us about that last 200. Well, I guess tactically the only thing that I could have done much differently is to have been in the front of the pack with the lap to go. But, um, you know, going into it, I knew that in past years, it's, it seems like the way that the event is kind of changing, it's turning into a much more of a strength event in that yep. it's the, the rounds are run hard. The day before I ran, probably one of the faster times I've run in the past couple of years just to advance through. And I got, you know, so like the, it's, you got to run fast to go through. So I, I was under the impression that my heat with the guys that were in it, that it would be a fast race. So I sure. was kind of playing it a little bit more conservatively. Typically I'm able to even off of a fast pace, I can close pretty well. I can go around guys who are dying. Um, and yeah, and so the coming in, the, you know, the race kind of got out well, and then it just really grinded to a halt. I think there was a lot of big names up front that kind of decided, oh, well, I'm not going to be the one who pushes the pace. You know, they all kind of did that for a lap or two. And so at that point, I'm already in the back thinking that it was going to be a faster race. So by the time I know it, you know, everyone's sprinting for it. And I had plenty, as you yeah, as you said, I had plenty left in the tank. Um so, you know, coming around the last 200 meters, yeah, it, it, in the last 200 of a race like that, when there's a lot of bodies, a lot of times it'll flank out and, you know, it goes, it turns into five wide, six wide down the home stretch, yeah. which is what it did. 
And so I, you know, oftentimes uh, the inside rail will like the, right along the inside of the yeah. you know, lane one will open up and that happens more often than not actually. So I kind of had to use just a mi- mixture of experience in my gut in the last 150 and just, and, and I could kind of see, oh, I can go, I can go way around into lane five and try to do that game. And I've been burned there many times before, or I could just hold this line because I see guys are kind of flying out of the lane one. And so I just held it and yeah, I held it all the way down, down the home stretch. And I was passing guys, like, like you said, and, and I just kind of slammed into the back of uh, a couple guys. Yeah. Who didn't kind of give up the inside as, as easily as I would have hoped. And, um, but you know, if anything, uh, it, it just, uh, you know, he, I don't, he said it's heartbreaking, but I, I would say that it's, it's like one of those things where I've been in the world championship final before and I'm definitely ready to run a, a really fast time, or, or maybe I was in the next day ready to run a fast time, but it's kind of just in the past and you just got to learn from it, you know? So I, just, I mean, uh, I say heartbreaking dude, because you, you, you see this, how, how fit you are and then. You get yeah. in the final, and you could medal. You could, you could medal. Yeah. You just got to yeah. get there, right? So that's the. And then there yeah, would yeah. be a big A six celebration. It would have bananas, and so I was thinking yeah, more yeah. selfishly. No, I know. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, I guess I just have to look at it as a learning experience and just be take motivation from it. Maybe you know, you, you say everything happens for a reason. Maybe I make that final and I kind of think, Oh, well, you know, I've done it all now. I ran fast in a final, you know, and I, so now it's sort of like, Oh, I have a new fire lit under me for the next couple of years. Maybe that's the reason I make an Olympic team is because I didn't quite make it through to the finals in, uh, in that race. So yeah, it's like, I just try to use it as a, a learning experience and the, a, a motivational sort of thing. And, and yeah, we'll have that big old ASICs party next year. Now that you brought that, now that, I didn't know we did. I didn't know we did big parties. So I want to. Well, John. Yeah, well, John. Chris is in charge. He's yeah, in charge. Yeah, John. Big parties. There was tons of them. I was um, told there was a party when I make the final. <laughs> uh, so John, as the as the dad watching this, and you've watched probably hundreds or thousands of his races, um, heartbreaking. What's your emotions as you see him fit enough to make it to the final, but just not quite there? Yeah, just like Johnny said, it's really not, it's, you know, it's not heartbreaking for us. You know, we're, you know, we're, we know what Johnny's about. We know what our children are about. And and so we know um, what they stand for and the kind of people they are. And that's what we're most, most proud of. And, and that's what we care about the most, you know, f- frustrated for Johnny, because I mean, you could see, you could see man with that he was just had no pain on his face that whole race was just relaxed the whole way and i said he's you know just watching it and just um he was just so so ready to go so fit and ready going into it and just looked great and then just you know you like he said you make the decision to make a move and you could do the woulda coulda shoulda that you know about so many things and and um he made the move and a lot of times that that opens up um it just, you know, would have been, you know, interesting to see how the final would have gone. He, actually, his semifinal was like a final with, with the, the amount of top quality mm-hmm. athletes sure. that were in there. Um, and so, you know, I, I think as a parent, it's I think the thing that's kind of a little more interesting is having run like Chris and myself having run ourselves. So you kind of have that that feeling. People often say, well, do you get are you nervous or you're like, you know, and maybe maybe once upon a time but not really so much anymore but but you kind of can't help that that sort of feeling because you you've been there you know what it was like to be to be out there and you know what the feeling is like and you know the disappointment and you never want any you don't you don't want anything bad for your children whether it was like you with it when they're sick when they're young or whatever you just don't you just don't you feel you don't want them to feel bad you don't want them to feel hurt in any way physically mentally emotionally and so so that's where that's where it, it really tugs at you you know you just want them to be happy and i and, you know, I tend to be someone who wants to even control that more. Like I really <laughs> want to control the happiness and control the not being sad and control it. But, you know, you, you, you got to go, go, go through life. So anyway, I don't know if that answered your question, but that um, was great. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of emotion. And then, yeah, then, you know, then there's the, there is the A6 part of it, yeah. but I'm not going to, I'm just being totally honest that we, we value the, our athletes primarily for who they are as people and we celebrate celebrate that and when there's a really strong victory i mean just the fact that johnny was there representing us and was was fantastic and then um you know we had several other athletes and emma bates and sarah and 
dollar element. So it's, you know, we really value what our athletes stand for. And, and if it's something that performance is above and beyond, you know, all the better. John, I saw you and Chris right after Johnny's final at Chris, USA's. Chris, John's wife. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I remember seeing you both, giving you both a big hug. And I was like, this is amazing. John, Johnny's going to make it. He's going to be on the team. You guys are hosting. You know, this is an incredible moment. You're like, well, well, you know, we got to wait to see what happens with rankings. And, and, uh, I just want to know, as part of the A6 planning, you know, committee, was this like you were going to deliver your son being on the starting line at Worlds? Was like that part of it? Did you, were there was, pressures was, there, Johnny? They, they was your dad it. like, if you're going to do one thing for me, kid, it's going to be that they you planned make this it for team. two years. This was on like you know pre-planning from years ago. Yes, John, good question. No, 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 no. We, again, <laughs> it's all it's it's um. You know, again, we're we're just proud of our athletes and whatever whatever they accomplish and and who they are. And um, now there was no no pressure for Johnny to uh, to make the team or anything like that. And and you know, it was we're so super proud that he did and represented us and represented uh, U.S. and represented our family just as well as he always does. And so there was nothing. Well, no, uh, I'll say this, Johnny. You, I saw a big poster of you at the Wild Duck. I mean, how cool was that? It was insane. It was huge. It's like lifetime. Cool. I mean, did you see that? I hope you got a picture of yourself in front of that. You probably did. I got other people sent me pictures uh, at various stages in the night. Uh, oh, yeah. Lord. Sir. And yeah. uh, it was always, uh, I'm glad it brought, I, I was glad it was in that spot. That's a funny spot. It seemed to bring people a lot of, uh, a lot of joy and they thought that people really got a kick out of it. And uh yeah, I mean the old wild duck. So I guess check that off the bucket list. Yeah, exactly. And on the window. Now right, you're famous. Times Square. Now you're famous. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, we want to talk a little bit more, more about your running, Johnny, in a minute. But uh, I, I wanted to d dive in real quick with John. Went to Georgetown. John and his wife, Chris, both went to Georgetown. Star runners there. Julie, obviously, former director of track and field at Georgetown. Tell us about your Georgetown experience. Why Georgetown back in, you know, uh, and, and in the mid or early eighties, when you made the decision to go there. Yeah. Um, well, I, uh, I was heavily influenced by a, uh, a guy named Kevin Byrne, who was, was, the, was the star athlete, uh, a high school athlete, uh, in the mid to late seventies. And, um, uh, also, the fact that Georgetown was kind of an up and coming team, and there was the Villanova at the time was a, a big, a big uh, name. I mean, still are. I mean, but sure. um, at that time, that was you know sc schools I would have been looking at, and um, I kind of wanted to be part of something that was building. And um, I was recruited by uh, my coach was Joe Lang, who then became the athletic director, and um, Julie knows who he is, and mm -hmm. it was just. A fantastic man, a fantastic. He, he was a father figure to me when I was at school at Georgetown, um, and and afterwards as well. And um, so I was just heavily recruited by them. Um, I really wanted to be part of something that was going to be up and coming, and a new a new team that was going to make a difference and and go after some of the big dogs out there in the NC two A. Um, had a great experience at Georgetown. The guys that I ran with were were fantastic. Um, obviously, the number one thing that came from my experience at Georgetown was meeting my wife, Chris. Mm -hmm. we, we met on the team there. Um, and that was a, it was a blessing. It was, you know, all, all part of God's plan for me to go there and for us to meet there. And um, it was just it was really a you know wonderful experience focused mostly on on being on the team. Now, you, you uh, had a very successful career at Georgetown and then went on to make the uh, both the 1980 and 84 Olympic teams. Now, I, I'm interested, you know, the pinnacle of our sport making the Olympic team. You make the 80 Olympic team and it's in Russia, I believe, is the, 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 where it was and in, and in the U.S. doesn't go. How heartbreaking was that for you? Uh, honestly, it wasn't at the time I was. 20 years old and I wasn't expected to make the team. And it was in it. Um, I'm not sure. I'm sorry if you didn't, if you mentioned it or not, but it, it was actually at, it was in Eugene, those trials. It was, okay. at, the, it was at the old stadium. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So it was, that was, it was pretty cool. 
And I was a sophomore going into my junior year and nobody, but nobody had heard of me. And um, it was actually Athletics West at the time was a really big team in, in Oregon and at Eugene. And Henry Marsh won the trial. Doug Brown was second and I was third. Um, and yeah, so it was totally unexpected. And then um, kind of looking back, it would have been nice to have had the experience to then bring that into 1984. Right. But at the time, being 20, I was like, oh, yeah, well, I'll make the next one, you know, as if like, you know, no big deal. But that's what you think when you're 20, right? Then you go. <laughs> so easy. So, so easy. Yeah, right. I mean, come on. And uh, so um, anyway, so then you know, then going in 84 was 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 really awesome. But at the time, not, you know, I think it would have been great to have had that experience in, right. in 84. And I'm going to find something that is heartbreaking for him. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, <laughs> um, so, uh, Johnny, uh, did you grow up knowing how, uh, you know, fast and elite runners that your, your parents were, was that a thing growing up? And when did you really know that you were going to be this great runner that you are? Well, yeah, I remember, uh, well, I grew up, you know, both my parents were uh, coaches at Brown University w uh, throughout my childhood. So I uh, spent a lot of time at the track and, and was sort of uh, just aware that, that they were good runners just from seeing like, you know, we had like just stuff around the house. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and I think my dad was in the tail end of his kind of running career when I was kind of a toddler. So I kind of remember different races nice. being being at races and i remember him winning and that yeah so it was uh it was always uh kind of a fun thing but not not anything that i had a, a incredible amount of interest in you know it was just sort of like this i guess it's just kind of what your family does it just you kind of think of it as you know you grow up with something and it's natural that's just how it is like oh yeah my parents are runners running's a, a sport and they were good at it and uh so it wasn't anything i was particularly interested in not until i got to high school really johnny he had, he had no interest in us in, <laughs> he was, no one of my races I, I ran the ocean state marathon my one and only serious marathon and i i won the race by like literally half a second uh and i collapsed on on the, the i mean 216 i i mean I, mm -hmm. I couldn't even see anything and he came running over and he looked over me and he said dad you got to see these two little dogs over here they're awesome <laughs> And I was like, uh, <laughs> that was, that was his level of interest in, in the running. Uh, Not um, like dad, you need some water. Yeah. Dad, no, why are you on yeah. the ground? Two sixteen, on, pretty amazing. Yeah. You got to see won the race. Dogs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you, uh, obviously great high school runner. Uh, you know, you, your, your parents go to Georgetown, Johnny Georgetown ever in the mix for you. You end up going to Columbia. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't remember it, but I, I guess maybe I talked to the coach once or twice, but I don't really remember it being any like sort of uh, on the table. Yeah, and you <laughs> go to an you go to Columbia. The rumor has it that you go to Columbia, influenced by star runner, star media personality in the track world now, uh, Kyle Merber. Is that true? Yeah, totally, totally. I mean, I guess I. I was, I, I knew about him and I like, you know, I knew he was a good runner and stuff, but it was actually more like coming on the recruiting trip that meeting him and then meeting the rest, I mean, the rest of the team is still like all my best friends to this day. And they, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just like, you know, you, when you know, you got the right place, you know, it so felt, felt right. And so, yeah, but Kyle definitely was one of the, one of the main, main influencers and he continues to be, uh, a big supporter of mine. All right. So Julie and I had Kyle, and this is a little bit of a tangent. We had Kyle and Chris on uh, a few episodes back. Love Sidious, what the, the guys are doing. I saw him out there at, um, and Eugene as well. I guess I didn't realize how close in age you were to him. Um, you're like running as well as you ever had. And he's washed up and retired. Now you're taking shots Whoa. Kyle here. Here we go. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Not long ago. Cool. He's retired, I should say. Well, I yeah, I spent I spent probably all of high school and early college either not running much at all or being hurt while while he was like a superstar runner. So I think I I think it, it's I guess I just have a lot of running left in the tank. Then he's he wanted to be a track star from the time he was like five years old. It was right. like his life goal and he accomplished it. And so he he. He, he had plenty of years of uh, legendary running under he his did. belt before I even thought about it. So 
uh, I guess he just sort of put in his time and, and now I'm, I'm, you know, in the midst of mine. Yeah. Kyle, Kyle is, is so, he, first of all, he's an unbelievable human being. He's a great person. I know he and Johnny are super, super close. Yep. And he has always been a cr- tremendous promoter of track and field. Ever, ever since he was in high school, he would, he would put races together and jump it in 800 with guys. And then ever since it, in his own career, he's always thought of the sport and he's always yeah. thought of, and he's continues to do that. And he's, and he's, he's such a good, uh, uh, ambassador for track and field. And I didn't mean to take a shot at him for the record. It was just, <laughs> oh no. Okay. He'll, he'll, we'll send him the appreciate. link. We'll send him the link. <laughs> uh, so your season is still going, Johnny. Uh, tell us about your last, last race that you just ran. That worked out pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. I ran the, um, the, guardian mile in cleveland ohio so it's a, a race that goes over the, the hope memorial bridge uh and so it's just a road mile uh point to point road mile you know start on one side of the bridge finish on the other and yeah i won it and it, it was a fat it's kind of a you know it's it's an interesting course because you kind of run up it's like kind of uphill on the way out and downhill you kind of drop off a cliff on the way back so i uh yeah i, I ran 346 for the mile over over a bridge in cleveland so that was a nice uh, awesome it was fun. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great, uh, you know, it's nice to come down off of the, the chaos of worlds and, and kind of just show up at a road race where no one really, you know, it's just sort of fun, you know, road yeah. race, the, the, the vibes at road races are always such great energy and to have won and just have, you know, have a good run felt great. Yeah. So, uh, now you're in Memphis going to run a track, yeah. track meet there. What, what event you doing there? Yeah. I'm uh, doing the 1500 tomorrow 1500. night here in Memphis. Yep. So by the time this podcast posts, we will have seen great results from you in this 1500. Um, I know you were at the New Jersey, New York track club. Um, who's guiding you through this process now? You're not, not work. Are you working with a coach now or yeah, your dad, yeah. your dad coaching? Like what, what, what's the deal with your, your coach? <laughs> no, no, my dad is just a, a consultant. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, yeah, I'm being coached by Andy Powell, who is okay. my um, coach at Oregon actually. So things kind of come full circle in that regard. And he actually recruited me. He was like one of the first people who recruited me in college too, which is kind of funny. He came and sat on our, our in our backyard. But um, yeah, so he's, he's, I mean, he's coached pretty much, you know, of the past decade. It's some of the more legendary like milers and stuff. And he's really got it down. So I know his system and I, I, I just, it's, it's all so, uh, you know, the way he approaches everything is very positive and very simple. And it's just a great, great system to, for especially my situation because I, I was with the New Jersey New York Track Club for a long time and yep. you know, being coached by Coach Gags and Coach Tom Nohilly and that was an amazing experience and those guys are all like family to me. But I was moving up to Boston. I, I actually started law school last fall, and I just yeah. And sometimes you just need a change. I'd been with them for about six seven years, so it was just felt like it was a, a time to to change it up and yeah. Went back to my old old college coach and it's been awesome. Johnny, how do you, how are you balancing? I mean, you were one L this year. That's not easy. Like, were yeah. you sleeping? Like, was yeah. one, was one priority getting shoved to the side to, to fulfill the other? Or how did you make that work? Well, I, I, yeah, I was definitely a busy, a busy person, not, but um, I, I like that sort of thing. I like, I, I, I really like to, you know, challenge myself. And, and I think it was really nice to have a, a challenge in the, in the, um, you know, intellectual sense, I guess, like having to go back to school and, and figure that out. And I would just spend, yeah, I would spend every morning, I go to class in the evening. So uh, I would spend all morning basically doing my training and running. And then uh, my wife, Amy gets home from work at like, you know, four, and then we have like an hour where we like eat dinner, and then I go off to class. And then I come back from class at like 930. And that's pretty much Monday, that's Monday through Thursday. And then the weekends, I have to train as well and Friday through Sunday. And yeah, and then I pretty much when I'm not running or eating or sleeping, I've just got a big old fat book in front of me. So what's the plan <laughs> here? I, I we were looking at the Olympics in, you know, 2024. Like, I, I mean, that's gotta be part of the plan, right? But law yeah. school is there, that, that seems like conflicting like priorities. Yeah. yeah. They actually sort of, they pair nicely together, to be honest. It's just a nice to go off to somewhere for part of my day and be it. And I, I love, like, I enjoy learning things and I enjoy school and like jeopardy is like my favorite thing so like <laughs> it's all just like it's just a nice thing where if you spend 24 7 thinking about running it can kind of like drive you a little crazy so 
it's a nice way to to mix it up and i i, I get to you know switch it and I get, yeah i think it just sort of sort of pairs nicely it's a nice um i, I don't know wouldn't call it an escape or anything but i would just say it's a nice like uh alternate side of the coin to be around people who aren't you know tuned into the running world so you don't think it's a disadvantage like because your competitors no. are full-time no, I mean, taking see, naps and all this stuff that, yeah yeah oh yeah i take naps but yeah you see, yeah <laughs> i just i guess when all the other guys other people watch netflix i'm just i happen to just be reading so that's something they like to do and that's what i like to do so i uh yeah it's it's fun it's it's it goes well together i think it's i i as i saw this year it kind of energizes me in a strange way uh having something else going on and and I think that a big part of, you know, any athlete can be sort of what's next, what's on my horizon. And like, yeah. am I anything more than just this person who can run around in circles fast? And I think kind of fulfilling that other side of yourself and saying like, oh, wow, yeah, I have these other things I can do and other opportunities. And there's a life beyond running that awaits me um, makes the, the present moment that much more enjoyable. See, I had a similar thought process when I was training with New Jersey New York Track Club. But I registered for classes at my community college <laughs> and went That's back cool, and took yeah. graphic design classes with 18 year olds. Yes. Nice. And like it made me feel good about myself. Right. Yeah. I just was like it was a different way to use my brain and just be thinking critically. Yeah. I, it was I I can relate because it was really hard for me to sit still all the time. Like John, I needed that other that other motivation. When you were okay. running professionally, John, did you go to school? Did you? <laughs> go to do you ran. Yeah, that's my guy see that's no i hated guy. school I, I i i hated school from first grade <laughs> till 16th grade and i the uh my mother said it was going to get better and it never did and uh but i loved i loved running and uh so now i did didn't do the but no the point is the point is really a good one that you you really have to have something else going yeah. on i mean not everybody it, you know it but there were Certain people who you just can't just, you know, focus on that running all the time. It just gets too, um, it's too, just too it wears you down too much and, and it's yeah. good to have, just have an outlet. And yeah, and I, we know that, uh, yeah, Johnny happens to love, um, love academics, which is completely unlike his dad. <laughs> is, so is that from your mom? Is your mom, is she, is she the academian? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, everyone, you know, plenty, lots of smart people in my family yeah. and both my yeah. parents, you know, they're, they're really smart. I guess people. I should and, say liking study. Yeah. You have to yeah, like I guess to it's study. Just, uh, yeah. I, I just, I just enjoy, I enjoy school. I, I guess it's just about doing what makes you happy. And if running 24 yeah. seven makes you happy, you're going to run fast. Yeah. And if running and then with a little bit of school makes you happy, you're going to run fast. So if six hours a day of Netflix is your jam. Then this is <laughs> then a great profession for you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So John, we really enjoyed catching up with you and your wife, Chris, um, outside at a six hall, beautiful outside uh, venue that a, that a six had at, uh, and Eugene, uh, do you guys get to you and Chris get to travel and see Johnny race, uh, frequently? Uh, how much do you get to see him race every year? Yeah, well, we don't we don't really f f we we go to some of the bigger races, and if it's and if it's uh, if it happens to be, we have friends in Eugene, and I, you know that was a great. I had to be there for for ASICs, and you know, so those are, those are great opportunities. Um, sometimes, if it involves visiting family, we'll do that. But we we have not in the course of of our children's lives, you know, followed around and followed them <laughs> and everything they they've done, and I mean, you know. Although we did our share at the baseball field when they were when they were younger, but in terms of seeing uh, Johnny's races, now he, he kind of does does most of them on his own. And we again, I'm just very fortunate to be with ASICs and have the opportunity to see them probably more than other parents might be able to see their children. So, and I have to, although I do have to fork over eight ninety nine tomorrow night to uh, eight dollars and ninety to watch the watch the one. race. So I'm still, I'm still, I'm still mulling that over in my right. Whether you should mind. or not, yeah. Johnny, was, should he buy it pay for the him, money? Johnny? Buy it for him. <laughs> should Remember he pay the money? Is it going to be worth prizes. the show? Yeah, I, I could mean, wait. I, I, you can do whatever, whatever. But I, I, it's, it's way past bedtime. I know that. That's the other problem. <laughs> That's, it's ten twenty is like pushing it. I might, I'll be, I, I could take, I might have to take a big afternoon nap to make it up till. <laughs> Uh, John, I, and I, I wanted to ask you about your running too. So, um, you know, Wikipedia says you're 60 or so. Uh, uh, <laughs> got a Wikipedia page. That's pretty cool, man. 62. Um, how much? How much are you able to run these days? 
kind of nervous. I have a Wikipedia page. I hope I'm not sure what's on there. Um, well, the bizarre thing is I've, I've been really blessed to be able to do it. I, not a ton of running, but able to, you know, run my four or five mile runs. And six, eight weeks ago, I, I developed a knee pain I've never wow. had before. And I found out today I've, I've got a torn meniscus. I kind of feel like, like, that's kind of like, I'm like, I'm an, I'm an athlete here. I've got a torn meniscus. I, so <laughs> That's true. Badge of honor. So two, so two good things. It's obviously I've been overtraining, number one. And, <laughs> and number two is now I don't have to run. I got a torn meniscus. I got it. And uh, it will, yeah, there will be no excuse. cross training. There will be yeah. just eating and sitting on the couch and maybe icing it a little bit. Now, I, I don't know. I, I, now I got to find out what to do with the torn meniscus. But anyway. Yeah. Do you, you and your, your wife, and this is a, uh, again, a selfish question as many of these questions are for me. Do you and your wife run together? Does she enjoy running as much as you do? Cause my yeah, wife doesn't run with me as much as we used to. No, we, no, we, yeah, it was one of, it's one of the nice things that we could enjoy together and we haven't been able to do it as much lately. And, um, and it's, it's something we literally could talk about our day or, go through yeah. things and, and, and stuff. So that, that's been, a, it's been a blessing that way. And but Chris is able to right now, she's in pretty good shape and she, um, and I'm just, she, she's staying fit. I'm putting on pounds. <laughs> well, you got the torn meniscus. You're now, I got the tournament. Yeah. So yeah. that's it. That, that's going to be the, yeah. yeah. I got, I got to ride that as long as I can. Uh, J Johnny. And, and this is real. These are, these are real hard hitting questions here. Do you run with your wife? Does your wife get out and run with you? Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Amy was a, a a swimmer in college, so okay. she has a little bit of athletic background. But she's run for some. She's run the New York Marathon twice. And, nice. And so she loves uh, she loves running. And yeah, so a lot of times I'll go for my second run of the day uh, with Amy, just you know, all around the we around Boston on the Charles River, nice and easy. It's great, great way. Like like my dad said, great way to chat and uh, you know, gossip. Well. I, my, I don't run with my wife as much as I'd like to, but she's got, maybe you got a torn meniscus too. I don't yeah, know. I got a you got lot a, of things. You got a lot. Of, yeah, but let me, let me just, things. let me just say, I'm going to brag a second about her. Uh, oh, I've no. done the heavy hitting research here. I think the last, we're talking about ASICs and we're talking about, two, we're talking to two champion runners here. The last ASICs athlete to win the Olympic trials, uh, win an event at the Olympic trials on the track is who? Julie Cully. You got it. <laughs> Julie Cully. Yep. yep. Way to yep. go with yep. that one, Chris. Yep. So, that was a I, nice just, layup. I just wanted to, I just thought as we talk. In, in, we don't know if that's a fact. I'm, just, I'm pretty sure. I did advertising some that research. all, all uh, around A6 I did, with I me did some with serious my head research. down. On the track. So not a field event. Yeah. Not a field yeah. event. Exactly. Yep. The last one to win the Olympic trials. Cool. Yeah. And now awesome. look at me. I, now, I, now I work for Brooks. I mean, what, what has happened? <laughs> Um, all right, before we, uh, I just had to brag. Sorry. Uh, no, it's good. It's all good. Yeah. And I just wanted to let ASICs know that too. Cause I know. I know. know. And, and, and ASICs is very, always remembers how yep. well Julie yep. represented us. Yep. Um, all right. Before I let you guys go, um, another, another thing. And Johnny, we had you on the show, uh, to talk about this. Just, I want to remind our audience, um, Fastest blue jean mile ever. Another record. You guys got all kinds of Wikipedia records. Uh, 406 in the blue jean mile. Um, when 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 uh, a group of my buddies were watching the race uh, and we were really disappointed to see you not move on, uh, one of my buddies said, and we had this big text string, what if everybody was in blue jeans? He would have smoked everybody in that, in that semifinals. Um Remind people what blue jean mile and what you, you did, uh, and how much money you raised, uh, for, uh, a, a really worthy cause. Uh, yeah, well, I guess I, I just, um, ran the world record for a mile <laughs> and a pair of blue jeans. So there's, I guess that's. The, but the, you had to train for it, Johnny. It's not like you back. just showed up. I just showed up. I didn't train for it at all. No, <laughs> yeah. I just showed up. You had to find and, the uh, right quality of jeans that were going to work. That would be, give you the yeah. best movement, right? Yeah, was, Least yeah. amount of friction. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Levi's, yep, five hundred ones, and uh, yeah, and I, I ran it during Mental Health Awareness Month in in during twenty twenty during the pandemic, and it was a year after my younger brother Patrick had passed away, and so it was mm -hmm. sort of it was in his honor, um, and uh, yeah, and so it was, 
just a great event. We raised a lot of money. I think yeah, today it's it's over a hundred thousand wow. dollars for National Alliance on Mental Illness, and a lot That's of people, awesome, uh, yeah, a lot of great people in the running community and my own family uh, helped me and kind of get it together. So it was uh, a wonderful event, and and did uh, you know I think it was a nice way to to honor my the Patrick's memory, and you know it was a very fun fun thing. Yeah, Beautiful. if I could, and if I could just chime in on that too, that's it's a. Uh, it was a very tough time in our life. And, and uh, you know, our daughter, Rachel, had uh, wanted to do something special for not to, to join with the NAMI group, uh, the National Alliance and Mental Mental Illness. And it's uh, and it's continues to be a, a, uh, it continues to be an issue um, in our, you know, in our country, in our world. Um, and so to bring awareness and, and ASICS has been incredibly supportive um and we've now we've have a yearly blue jean mile that we're hoping to continue yeah. to grow and 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 all all to bring awareness to the issue of of mental illness and and people who are struggling and, and going through difficult times so um yeah johnny kicked off something really special there and, and we're going to continue it it's beautiful man beautiful when is, when is that going to be held what, what, it'll be in may it'll be each may there'll be an event that's going to go on and uh uh, we had one again this year, and, and um, we just want to c continue to grow to keep that awareness there, and to uh, and who knows, maybe we'll get uh, maybe we'll get Julie in a pair of jeans. <laughs> we're gonna, John, we're gonna do something in, in May here. We'll do something with Pacers in May. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll definitely do. I can't wait. Uh, to I think we have a, and Rachel, my sister Rachel, and I also we kind of and and my wife have been talking about tossing the idea of like a real full-blown road race around out there like yeah. so with the blue jean mile element so okay it's like lots of a team on it we got it we got we got event uh, an events company we're gonna get my team on it all right. um that's beautiful that's stuff beautiful. um all right guys well johnny your season's not over you're in memphis um <laughs> and then 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 how long does the season go we're here at the end of uh, of july do you keep going when do when do you end i'll probably yeah run until early september or so so nice. yeah, I mean, awesome. race pretty much not every weekend, but yeah, I race, uh, I race tomorrow and then the next one will be a few weekends later in, in the Bahamas, actually the, nice. the NAC, the NACAC championships. Oh, that's America. so fun. Yeah. yeah John, he picks all the, he, he picks all the difficult places to go and run. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly. Tough. So it's a tough life. Got to go to the Bahamas. Got to for the job. And yeah, um, for the job. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see what what happens from there. But it's it's always fun. And yeah, good man. Well, give him a follow. It's at Johnny on uh, Instagram. Great Instagram follow there. Uh, John, uh, he's he is in sports marketing and ASICs. And man, congratulations on an amazing. 10, 12 days that you guys executed at the highest level at the world championships. I had a great time out there and I really appreciate uh, the A6 crew having me out there and congratulations. It was a real team effort. I knew you were a part of it. Yeah, we, we really, uh, were very happy with and it, it, the way it turned out. And again, I was a microscopic part of the amazing <laughs> people, the hard work that went into that from so many people. Um, and so it was, it, it's, it's nice that it all came through. Awesome. All right. Well, you guys are amazing. Some of my favorite people in the sport. They've got the fastest father son <laughs> mile time, uh, fastest blue team. A lot of world records here. Uh, John and Johnny Gregorak, they join us at Pace Nation. Fellas, awesome stuff. Thank you Thanks. so much. Thanks for everything you do. Thanks for the yeah. way you guys promote, promote it. It's all love good. It. Great. Love Great it. Stuff. Love it. You guys are the best. All right. There they go. Johnny and Johnny Gregorak, they join us on Pace the Nation. Take a quick break. Be right back after this. Pace the Nation is brought to you by Pacers Running Stores. Pacers has six stores in Northern Virginia and D.C. For the best running footwear, apparel, and gear, just stop by or schedule a virtual fitting with the best running experts in the business. Pacers Running exists to help as many people as possible through running. For every run, it's Pacers Running. All right, welcome back to the program, and thanks again to our guests today. Uh, John and Johnny Gregorak, uh, both ASICs employees. John works in sports marketing. Johnny is a star athlete for ASICs. And man, yeah, you know, I know you are a uh, you, you are a sports marketing manager for Brooks, but you got you had to have been rooting for Johnny to uh, make that final as he came down that last straightaway 
and he was so close to making it. I know you're, you're friends with him. Um, but, uh, awesome to have those guys on the show. And, I'm always rooting uh, for Johnny Gregoric. He, you guys were he, like, yeah, you guys no, were like we New Jersey we, York track club together. Maybe we did not cross over. Cross over. We okay. did not cross over. He came in after I left. Um, okay. but I've gotten to watch his career from afar, especially having been an ASICS athlete and he an mm-hmm. ASICS athlete. So, um, it, it, he's just the most quality individual and his family is as well. And so he's just one of those people in the sport that everyone cheers for. Everyone wants to see Johnny be great. Yep. No doubt. Well, it was great to have them on the show. And I want to, again, say thanks to ASICS. Um, Thanks to to Kat for helping making this uh, cats and marketing of ASICS, helping to making this interview possible. Um, All right. Last thing before we get out of here, um, I want to let everybody know pace the nation Instagram is back at Pace the Nation. We had a password issue. It was a whole thing. I got I had a guy on the inside, and that's a whole nother story at a Pace the Nation happy hour. But a guy on the inside was able to navigate his way through this metaverse because you know Facebook owns uh, mm-hmm. Instagram, and there uh, they, they, we were able to get our, our account back, and we are back on. Uh, Instagram at Pace the Nation, really exciting news. So uh, if you have been following us, if you haven't been following us, give us a follow at Pace the Nation. Uh, content coming soon on that uh, social media platform. All right, Julie, I know you got to get back at it. Um, it was great. Like I said, we were off for a week, so it's great to be back. Uh, thanks again to our awesome guests today, John and Johnny Gregorak of A6. Uh, they joined us, uh, and they were awesome and really rooting for 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 John as this season rolls on through September. Uh, Julie, we'll choose our own adventure next week. We'll talk about the move, or the next time we're on, talk about the move and your trip to, to Brooks. So a uh, little teaser for the next time we, uh, we broadcast for Face the Nation. All right, thanks to our guy Chris behind the scenes. For Julie, I'm Chris Farley. This is Face the Nation. We will see you next time.